with us today. Um, um, you know, for, uh, for being here for this mainstreaming museum session. I will briefly introduce myself as the moderator of this uh, very prestigious panel, and then introduce our panel panelists, who will then share their, uh, their side of the story. My name is Nadra Shahbaz Naim Khan. I am an art and architectural historian. I teach at LUMS. I'm also serving as the director of the Gurmani Center for uh, Language, Literature, and Culture. Uh, and therefore, I have a very close affinity with museums because museum collections um, inform my questions that I try to answer through my research. I've also been serving on the you know, Museums Advisory Council with uh, Dr. Asma Ibrahim, Mrs. Salima Hashmi. Um, we have Susan Strong, the senior curator of the Victoria and Albert Museum on, on, uh, in the committee as well as Mr. Qasim Jafri and Harun Sharif, who's an economist. Mr. Qasim Jafri is a, is a you know, very senior hospitality expert. And we've been trying to uh, you know, um, mainstream or trying to uh, you know, fix several issues that are related to the museum's management and governance issues. And what we've found throughout, you know, through this journey of more than a year, is that there is very little awareness among people of how important museums are, what kind of a role a museum can play in society. How can a museum and its collections serve to bring people together, to bring communities together? How can these objects that you know, kind of stand, lie, mute in museums have stories to tell? They represent people who made them. Um, they have their biographies that you know, are expected to be read and understood. And, you know, and, and so many other roles that museums uh, can play no less than educational institutions in our society. Um, and I could go on um, on this forever, but I'm really grateful uh, to uh, the committee who formulated sessions in this literary festival to have picked up this very important theme of museums. Um, because I'm sure you will agree when I say that literary festivals is a way to celebrate knowledge making and you know it so sows many seeds uh, that are harvested in the years to come and now that the seed of museum discussion has been sowed here i look forward to reaping a yield in many years uh, in the future um, i will introduce the panelists and uh, and then one by one um, you know, we, I have a list of questions that we've been talking about, that we've been discussing, that will bring about their own respective roles in their museums, how they've, uh, you know, worked in certain situations, worked around certain, uh, you know, difficult areas, what have been their achievements, what have been their challenges, and what is their vision to, uh, to deal with these challenges. So a kind of a... Just like they say, SWOT analysis: strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. You know that lie within, that lie uh, on the external side as well. And so each one of them have spent many years of their lives into trying to make museums interactive, hospitable for people who come in as institutions that can generate interest among you know uh, people of all age groups. So their contributions are. Uh, really worthy of appreciation. Um, our first uh, esteemed guest is Dr. Asma Ibrahim. She's a senior archaeologist, museologist, and conservationist. She's the founder director of the State Bank Museum, Archives and Art Gallery, Karachi. If you haven't visited it, please do it ASAP. Uh, this is a project she embarked upon after serving the Department of Archaeology, Government of Punjab as curator director for almost two decades. Her doctoral studies were in numismatics and her post doctorate as a Fulbright scholar in archaeological chemistry. And she does a lot more than that as well. Uh, I'm sure she'll be sharing some of that with us. Dr. Jean Baptiste Claes is an um, ethnologist and an art historian. He's the curator of the Asian collection which includes China, Japan, and some Indian, 
and European porcelains at the Department of Art Objects at Louvre, Paris. In his free time, which I'm sure is much more than that, he researches Mughal art, especially hard stones and luxury weapons. And he has a panel, to, he has a session tomorrow where he will be talking about you know, one of these exquisitely crafted uh, weapons, chilinum. As an ethnologist, uh, Dr. Jean Baptiste uh, specializes in contemporary popular culture, Star Wars, internet, video games, very exciting, comics, blockbusters. He volunteers in a nonprofit specialized um, in these fields, uh, mo5.com, that I know very little about, uh, to prepare a collection and project for a future museum of popular culture. Ghazala Rahman is a National College of Arts graduate with her fine, where she did fine arts, took up fine arts as her major. She is the founder and the spirit behind Pakistan's leading furniture design outlet, InDesign, and I'm sure many of you are familiar with it. Uh, and this InDesign, objects that are created in InDesign are admired for their handcrafted pieces that have revived several traditional crafts such as uh, nakashi, which is hand painting, munabbatkari, which is relief work or carving, marquetry, um, also known as the traditional Kashmiri Khatam Bandi or Khatam Kari. She's been serving on the board of the National College of Arts for several years, and in 2020 was made the head of the advisory committee to restore and curate a forgotten jewel in Lahore, the Shakir Ali Museum. So uh, we will turn to her now to share the achievements of this committee under the, her leadership, the scope and significance of this museum um, as a meaningful institution and the challenges uh, she has faced uh, for making them uh, realize uh, its full potential. Ghazal Rahman, over to you. Talking about a museum that I had known since it was made I was a um, student at the time when Shakir Ali built this uh, museum with the help of his protege, Nayar Ali Dada. It is unique in its construction because it was an artist's home. The facade of the ha house has the bu a burnt brick, um, burnt brick as effect, and um, the windows and all the woodwork is based on the Swati carvings, the old Swati carvings. It's very beautifully um, uh, I mean, the spaces are beautiful in terms of the light and uh, the way the artist wanted to live. The museum went into the hands of the government after the pr principal died, the, uh, the artist died, and uh, it became a museum in the, in the 70s, early 70s. Uh, when I was asked to help in restoring this place, it was in a complete uh, state of degradation, of neglect, and no work had been done on uh, keeping it alive or in, in the public eye. So I set up a small committee uh, of uh, young artists and those who were excited about this project, and we went about restoring it. It took me uh, 10 days to clean it up, to take out all the, to get the wiring done, plumbing done, this, that, and the other, everything. We got money at that time from the, um, uh, from the state because it was interested in doing so. Uh, but once we had restored it, we wanted it to become a place where people could come, not just come and visit, but also make it into a very lively spot for those who were interested in the, uh, in, in culture and art and other activities. The Pakistan National Council of the Arts is also uh, owns that, uh, that property. So uh, what we decided was that it would also have within the compound of the offices, uh, PNC offices, we would have uh, workshops for young students to come and paint, draw, uh, also have film, film to show films, to, to have various cultural activities. 
they, we also <laughs> were planning to have a small uh, mm, uh, gift shop with crafts there and also to s have a little cafe. The problem, of course, is the bureaucratic hurdles that we have faced and therefore the, the museum is there looking absolutely just spot on, but we are not able to do very much there unless funds are given, which is a perennial issue. Uh, uh, well, I have no slides. Yeah, I will show you some of the so interiors. Uh, you can move it from the right. So that is uh, the artist's work. This is all his. This is your first slide. This is my first slide. You want to say something about it? That's his staff there, hanging on an old carving from uh, Swat Valley. And the second slide? This is his work. He was a modernist, and he was part of the Lahore Art Circle. In fact, he was a he was center stage in the. Shakir Ali was mm, a modernist as an artist. He introduced uh, Western, the Western concept of art to uh, this uh, younger colleagues, uh, to younger colleagues who circled around him and formed uh, uh, what is called the Lahore Art Circle. These, there were very prominent artists in that period and these were people who actually benefited or looked into the whole um, period of the uh, of the 50s 50s yes that's right i'm very nervous i'm sorry i've never spoken before but if you ask questions i can <laughs> answer better yeah, yeah. Uh, can speak then she can come out yeah so uh, uh, <laughs> so so we need to turn off otherwise echo hoga let me turn off dr asma ibrahim could you please share with us your story of uh, you know, making your museum a space which is uh, meaning making for the visitors in so many different capacities. How do you think, you know, part of another part of my, my question would be, how have you made your museum accessible? And how do you think this accessibility then enhances this meaning making? Thank you. Uh, thank you, Nadra, and thank you all the audience who are here and chose to be here in spite of the other interesting sessions. I always appreciate people who come to the museum session because we are the most neglected people. So I'm very happy when people come. So I'm really happy and excited. So another question is, uh, I'll talk about my museum, which is a uh, state bank museum for the last 17 years. But before that, I was with the government of Pakistan, uh, Department of Archaeology and Museums. And I had my dream to become an archaeologist. And I was the first woman archaeologist who uh, attempted to go into the field. And then I faced a lot of difficulties, as you might know, being a girl in 
आर्कियोलॉजी एंड गोइंग टू द फील्ड तो वो सब तो था दैन एट द सेम टाइम वी वर शफलिंग इन बिटवीन म्यूजियम एंड एक्सप्लोरेशन एंड एक्सकवेशन ब्रांच सो फॉर अबाउट ट्वेंटी ईयर्स आई वॉज डूइंग दिस एंड आई वॉज विद द नेशनल म्यूजियम ऑफ पाकिस्तान क्यूरेटर एंड डायरेक्टर सो देयर माई आई ऑलवेज बिलीव कि आप लोग म्यूजियम स्टडीज किताब से नहीं कर सकते हो इट्स अ प्रैक्टिकल जॉब सो वेन आई वॉज इन द म्यूजियम आई यूज टू सी द विजिटर्स कमिंग इन ऑल दो वेरी फ्यू विजिटर्स ओनली स्कूल्स बाई फोर्स कम स्कूल्स के बच्चों को तो ले आते बच्चों को बट बच्चे जो थे वो इतना डरते थे भूत भूत बिकॉज उधर फिगरिंग्स होती थी और इट वॉज क्वाइट बोरिंग म्यूजियम इन फैक्ट बड़ों के लिए तो चलो वी यूज टू कंडक्ट बट फॉर किड्स वी कूडन डू मच सो आई स्टार इड अ बस एंड वी स्टार इड अ मोबाइल म्यूजियम फॉर किड्स एंड स्मॉल थिंग्स लाइक दैट बट आई कूडन डू मच बिकॉज ऑफ लाइक वजाला ऑल्सो सेट फंड्स नहीं होते गवर्नमेंट में तो हमें तीन लाख रुपया मिलता था पूरे साल का तो उसमें कुछ भी नहीं हो सकता था बट वट एवर आई कुड डू फ्राम फॉरन जो भी आते थे लोग बाहर से उनसे कुछ कुछ जमा किया कुछ एग्जीबिशन कर ली फिर दिस पोस्ट वॉज एडवर्टाइज फॉर द स्टेट बैंक क्यूरेट डायरेक्टर तो ऑल दो आई डेंट वॉन्ट टू लीव माई पैशन विच वॉज बींग आर्कियोलॉजिस्ट सो आई थॉट दैट देर इज़ अ चांस दैट आई कैन गो एंड मेक अ म्यूजियम ऑफ माई ड्रीम विच आई ऑलवेज ड्रैम्ड सो आई हैड टू लीव माई फर्स्ट पैशन एंड गो टू दी अदर वन माई डॉक्टरेट इज़ इन कॉइंस आई डिड माई पी एच डी इन इंडो ग्रीक कॉइंस सो कॉइंस वर ऑल्सो माई पैशन बिकॉज डॉक्टर दानी वॉज माई टीचर तो फिर आई वॉट आई वॉन्ट इट टू डू एंड वाई आई लेफ्ट माई lovely job not lovely in the sense of the finances but in the sense of that that was my love ji to phir wo chhod ke when i joined state bank of pakistan just because ki i could do what i couldn't do in the government to so, uh, state bank handed me over a building which was full of junk like we know that jab when you abandon a building so all the junk start compiling up in that empty building so it was the same scenario um we couldn't show you many uh, slides here but phir bhi nahi wo nazar nahi aayega inko i didn't put that one actually aap kar dijiye main kar dun ji to phir wo sara junk tha so uh, there was a big challenge there was no collection state bank just asked me to establish a museum and the building was not conserved it was imperial bank of india's building if you can see uh, ye imperial bank of india ki building hai aur sabse bada challenge aap iske upar state bank museum likha hua dekh rahe hain iske niche imperial bank of india tha when i completed the whole project and i removed state bank of pakistan you must have seen this in news lot of times this building comes to uh, the, there was a big hue and cry that i have to hide india because uske upar india nikal aaya to log something india ki building hai so i camouflage that so that was another big job acha to jo nadar ka question tha ki how i made this museum accessible and why i wanted to make it accessible because national museum of pakistan could never have wheelchair accessibility they could never have blind visitors visually impaired i'm sorry and hearing impaired so that was one thing i wanted to concentrate and here i had a liberty to do that so when i was designing the museum furniture and designing the museum i kept in mind that the showcases height should be as per available wheelchair height so i used to change it like i changed it three times ke bacche wheelchair par aakar usko dekh sake wo kiya phir humne braille introduce karaya apne museum mein ha aur our slogan is beat the disability so we have different functions with these kids who are uh, disabled or specially uh, special needs hoti hain so we teach photography to uh, visually impaired and we sell it for them we give the income back to them and only recently last saturday we had an exhibition of textual art first time in pakistan ke uh, visually impaired bachcho ne aake art ko feel kiya ye aap dekh sakte hain photographs and the happiness they had i just cannot explain these kids were so excited and so happy here is our governor also and these kid these 75 students of karachi university visual studies department worked with me for about a year to design these small six or seven exhibitions there were activity sheets there were board games signage short documentaries about fake money and all that and plus the textual art and designing of currency notes etc so uh, what i wanted was that 
और uh, एक तो ये तो टीन एजर्स हो गए वट आई डू इज़ दैट आई हैव समर कैम्प फॉर लिटिल चिल्ड्रेन फ्राम थ्री ईयर्स ऑनवर्ड्स एंड आई एम वेरी लकी टू हैव अ डे केयर सेंटर इन द स्टेट बैंक अच्छा शुरू में देर वॉज अ लॉर्ड ऑफ रेजिस्टेंस फॉर द म्यूजियम इन द स्टेट बैंक नो बडी वॉन्टेड अ म्यूजियम इन द सेंट्रल बैंक सो देर आर फ्यू हाई अप्स ऑल्सो हु डिन वॉन्ट अ म्यूजियम दिस एट वॉट म्यूजियम इज़ डूइंग इन अ सेंट्रल बैंक सो no funding so but uh, how i made this place into their hearts i started having these summer camps so these their kids only no no outsiders so when their kids started coming to the museum and having fun and their parents per force had to come to the museum to pick them up so <laughs> they were all with me so i created a soft corner one thing second thing was that ke at this age if you create a softness for the heritage it will leave a deep mark on small children which we cannot do at the level of matric or sixth class or seventh at least so this is one thing that i did and i am very happy Uh, like from 2013 we are having these summer camps or ab ye bacche bade ho ke they become volunteer when they are 15 years they don't leave the museum and they are uh, you know during the covid times they were through the windows they were calling me museum aunty when we are going to have a summer camp <laughs> so <laughs> i was so disappointed but you know these kids they love the museum we have a, a small mini screen एंड डॉक्यूमेंट्रीज़ फॉर किड्स तो ये जो चीज़ें थी ये मैंने बच्चों के लिए की देन आई ओपन द म्यूज़ियम फॉर कम्यूनिटीज़ सो ऑल द कम्यूनिटीज़ आर वेलकम टू द म्यूज़ियम दे डू देयर क्राफ्ट मैन शिप देयर एंड वी सेल इट फॉर दैम वी हैव देयर एग्जीबिशंस देन आई हैड अ कंटेम्प्रेरी आर्ट गैलरी वेयर आई इन्वाइट यंग एंड अपकमिंग आर्टिस्ट आई डिड आई डू देयर एग्जीबिशंस फॉर नॉन प्रॉफिट वी सेल देयर वर्क एंड वी डोंट टेक एनी प्रॉफिट एंड वी exhibit solo shows also and plus for the last 3 years we have started a program artists in residence so first year we had one artist but then we realized that there should be one more from the far off areas like balochistan and all who doesn't have the opportunities so ek acha artist hota hai nca or achhi university ka and one is from balochistan or you know uh, abandoned areas under representative areas so this is another thing i'm doing and this is the third year that we have done this then this time we have started block printing and old methods of printing we are introducing those methods through artists in residence so this museum is open to interfaith harmony we do teachers training we invite teachers to come and tell us that what do they want in their course books and how can i change the museum displays so that when their kids come it's related to their curriculum so there is much much more but uh, i don't want to take much time of the uh, baptist so i will come back acha this is um, education hands on experience this i did because uh, when the student come to the stamp gallery aajkal ke bachcho ko pata hi nahi hai stamp kya hota hai wo puchhte stamp kya hota hai envelope kya hota hai you know they all know email and computers so this is the first post box of pakistan aur isko maine suggestion box mein convert kiya and kids really love it and they come to know ke what was the postage stamp and how we used to post the letters in our times so these kind of experiments also we do so kids learn hands on experience we have board games cardboard games and uh, other stuff jigsaw puzzles ye wo hai aur fir is like you shown all my slide acha थोड़ा सा पीछे जा सकते अच्छा इसमें एक चलता फिरता म्यूजियम का कॉन्सेप्ट था बिकॉज हाँ वो सारे लोग बोलते हैं हमें तो पता ही नहीं है स्टेट बैंक में म्यूजियम है अब आई डोंट नो हाउ टू एडवर्टाइज माय म्यूजियम सो वी डिड दिस आल्सो चलता फिरता म्यूजियम जी और ये आर्ट गैलरी है सादिकैन की वी हैव फाइव ह्यूज म्यूरल्स ऑफ सादिकैन विच आई कलेक्टेड फ्राम different offices of the state bank of pakistan and then i displayed them we have one zahoor ikhlaq huge zahoor ikhlaq ka mural and then we have gulji ke pieces and now we are having lot of donations from private collectors because if they don't have conducive atmosphere so they come to us then and they say you take our collection and you are looking after the collections yeah, very well ji acha theek hai hmm theek hai sahi बस ठीक है ओके सो आई कम बैक टू यू इफ यू हैव एनी क्वेश्चंस एंड आई विल आई वुड लाइक टू गिव टाइम टू बैप्टिस्ट आल्सो सो ही शुड टॉक अबाउट थैंक यू 
I can turn mine Apologies. on. Apologies. Uh, so thank you, thank you for having me and for having a representative of the Louvre among you. Um, so on behalf of my museum, I want really to, to thank Pakistan for hosting us. Um, it is really interesting the discussion we have here because um, the perspective I have is dual. On one side of my life, I live exactly the same experience you have uh, in small museums with uh, limited budget and opposition from administrations and all that kind of uh, difficulties. And on my current capacity at the Louvre, I'm there. So in the biggest museum in the world, this is an image that most of you must have seen at least once because this is one of the iconic, the most iconic places in the world. So we, we leave this strange thing in the Louvre to be a desired museum. So people come to us, so it's not an issue to have people come. But the issue you raised, uh, which is how people relate to us, this issue is completely different. And so this is what people dream. So people come to Paris um, someone just earlier told me Paris is the city of love and culture. Uh, no Parisian will ever consider that. Uh, uh, never. <laughs> and um, so there are the places where uh, the tourists go and the places where the Parisian go. And I think you have the same here. You must have some monuments that as Lowry's you never go to but all tourists like me will go visit. Yeah, everyone in the world will have that. So the problem of the Louvre is that we have millions of people coming. When the, the, the museum was redone in, uh, 19, in the 1990s and when the pyramid was built, uh, it was meant for 3 million people maximum. And uh, just before COVID, we reached 11 million. Uh, so I let you imagine the practical issues we had and, there, and some are really um, <laughs> uh, we, we talked about the problem of toilet maintenance in museum. When you have 11 million people, uh, I let you imagine what it is. And so it's not culture that you are facing when you are in an overcrowded museum. So this is what we sell, what people imagine they will find. And this is what we have. So we have a sociologist inside the museum because uh, the museum is so big, the, the, the whole building must be 300,000 square meters, all floors together, and 60,000 of uh, uh, space open to the public. And uh, we are 2.3 thousand people working in, uh, including 700 administrative staff, 77 curators. And among them, this sociologist, because we are so big that we need some sociological insight to understand what's happening. And she studied that. And she has noticed that the visitor's behavior changed depending on the density of people in the room. So she, uh, she has identified, identified thresholds uh, above which people change behavior. So at fir the, the first is you behave normally, you visit, you're looking at artworks, you're even reading the text sometimes, uh, you're selfing yourself. And then there is more people, so you stop selfing and you try to move. So you, so you pass in, into uh, like moving mode, like you're trying to avoid the crowd. And uh, then there is the passive aggressive uh, stance where you, you're just protecting yourself uh, from physical contact with others, and there is the aggressivity uh, moment, which you see here. Uh, this is the, the, the Joconde room. And so, uh, as strange as it is, my, my, my reflection on museum is that uh, having people inside is not the, uh, is not the point. The, the point is exactly what you said, how they relate to the content. And uh, the, uh, a bit of history of museum is interesting to understand what's happening. Museums have been there all over the world for circa two centuries, a little bit more. And at first, what were they? They were the place where you collect, where you put collections of artifacts. And these collections were made first 
at a period when we were ordering the world, intellectually speaking. The collection was the support of the understanding of the world. The moment the first um, like science collectors made their first uh, dry flower collection, this collection were dictionaries of flower. Before that, we, we had nothing. And so the museums were the same thing as we made for flowers, for animals and stuff. We did that for art. You classify, you organize. And then the museum is the place where this is shown. But you understand when we do that, that we have a full population that is interested in this trend of classifying. The entire intellectual sphere was committed into that. So when someone comes visiting your museum, he or she comes, sees something he already knows, is already familiar with. And so you don't have to teach him or her. So you just come and see something you like. When I do pop culture exhibition, it's super easy. I have nothing to say. When I, when I, when I put an exhibition with uh, like Super Mario, like everyone knows Nintendo. So I, I barely have to, to write a small label with historical explanation, but people are familiar with the content. So I have less work. When it comes to that, everything you see here, no one knows anything about it anymore. The general population, the classical European culture, it's dead. You, you have art historians like us, we are, we are passionate, etc. but the general public doesn't know. Um, it's especially strong in France because we lost religion. We, we are not um, a believer's nation, nation anymore, very few people, and most of our art is Christian. So basically, people come to us seeing an art that represents a culture they have lost and they even don't want to know about anymore. So how do you deal with that? And still, because we are an, an icon, we are overflowed with people. And uh, I think your way is the good one. We, we've tested a lot of solutions uh, in the past in museums. So first thing first, don't do digital at all. It doesn't work unless you're online uh, and filling the Wikipedia files of your museum, but any type of online visit and stuff, no one cares. And there has been generation, every two or three years, someone tries to revolution the museum world by making it more appealing with digital in the uh, online or in the room, that doesn't work. You just end up with a dead machine in your, in your rooms. And, and what you do, like, Welcoming people with real people alive and having activities with them is the only thing that ever worked. So, so my view is the future in museum is having more people welcoming uh, the kids. And, and don't, don't suppose because people are attracted to you, this is a Louvre issue, that they care. Because what we know from our sociologists is that people come to make the selfie to prove to their friends they've been there. And, and they don't engage with the text, they don't engage with art. We have a small community of people that are passionate with art. Most of them have done artistry studies or are from the family of someone who does. And the outside this small group, we just have tourists. And, and tourists enjoy the place, so that makes us happy because people are happy to come there. But our mission, that is to share art and to help the people um, enrich themselves with art, this we, there we don't do it. <laughs> and this is the changes that are happening right now. We are trying to, to deal with this issue. Oh, and one last slide. Uh, yeah, this one is hilarious. Uh, there was construction in the gardens and uh, having the, the translation is bad because Improving the Louvre, but the, the French words means uh, making the Louvre more welcoming, uh, if you translate it really. And having that with barbed wires, uh, <laughs> it, it made us laugh a lot. But it, it, it's also symbolical of this difficulty we have. Uh, you renew the museum, you make something more shiny, more beautiful, but are you really making it more welcoming? Thank you so very much, uh, Jean-Baptiste, for sharing your side of the story. Um, we have a lot of young people here. I'm sure they would be interested in asking all the panelists questions. 
but let me just do one small round, uh, you know, with my panelists again. You know, going back to to Ghazala Rahman. Uh, you know, I would like to ask you, Ghazala, but aye, ab Shakir Ali Museum ko kya banana chahti hain? Kaise log wahan par aaye? Kya seekh kar jaye? What is your vision? Aap please on kar lijiye usse, wahan se. मेरे ख्याल में the museum should be open to students, the student was largely artists, since it is an artist's home and it expresses a lot of his personality, his personal items, the way he lived. There was a personal lifestyle that has been that is reflected in this museum, and it was the way the artist lived. He was from Rampur. Uh, but um, and then he went to the slate school and uh, had a, you know had western training in art mm -hmm. he was uh, a pioneer in that sense we became the principal of the national college of arts M most students don't even know about the chakri really, let alone know the museum so that my first attempt would be is in fact to engage with the student body of uh, 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 other art colleges and also to l lend the space for young people to come and have shows of their own. Since the offices of the PNC are next door to uh, the sh museum, and uh, the m PNC owns the museum, therefore we have the facility to uh, have uh, activities for children for uh, young artists and for uh, pub the public to come and uh, to enjoy that space because it's also very um, like uh, it's very um, it's something it's very inviting it's it's a place where you can just be uh, and w meet people just hang around we also want people to come and have uh, like lectures like sol soliloquies like readings like small plays like artist shows uh, filmmaking anything but just to just to get into the field uh, into this field uh, for a variety of people to come and express themselves through whatever they want to uh, do and work with towards mm. thank you so much uh, can you please turn this off so i can turn it on thank you very much Asma, um, you know, how do you think a museum space can work to bring communities together? Um, how do stories that are embedded in different objects, you know, stories of them being created, patrons, people who use them, people who snatched them, stole them, you know, all objects have, have such fascinating stories. And when you showcase these stories, when you stories ko logon ke samne lekar aate hain, aur uske piche uski history, uski political, social, cultural, religious, कहानियाँ उसमें से निकलती हैं and when you display them you know preempting all sensitivities that are cultural and and religious and social what do you expect people to do then you know what can a museum space then do for people how important these spaces are and how can we improve them and how can we motivate our young people to go to museums more frequently not for selfies for actually you know engaging with these objects well, it's a very good question, and I don't know how you knew that they are already doing it. <laughs> I just <laughs> so we um, I had a small book of uh, Kaidi Azam's chef, and he used to spend rupees ten daily. I actually uh, recreated it in an old form. I got it from National Archives. So uh, the children, uh, the kids, the students were so amazed by the discipline of the Kaidi Azam's chef. So one project is that it is called Soda Project. And they started collecting the slips of their mothers, and they kept boxes outside the stores. Ke aajkal how they are buying, how they are doing the grocery, or kitna spend karte hain grocery pe. Then they did little documentaries, short documentaries with their mothers, aunties, and all those giving interviews. Ke wo what recipes they are using, and what sort of uh, masala they are buying these days, spices and meat and all. Because Kaidi Azam ke zamane mein jo jo list thi pura gosht itne ka paanchana, dasana. To pure 10 rupees rose 
वो खर्च करता था एक आना ज़्यादा नहीं एक आना कम नहीं तो किड्स वर रियली इम्प्रेस एक हमने ये प्रोजेक्ट किया अब वो द ब्रिटिश काउंसिल लाइक इट सो मच दैट दे फंडेड इट फॉर वन ईयर नाउ द वेन द मानचेस्टर म्यूजियम स्टूडेंट्स केम टू आस द यंग पीपल वी हैड अ कोलेबरेटिव टीम सो दे वर हेयर एंड दे वॉन्टेड टू कुक विद द रेसिपीज ऑफ देयर पेरेंट्स हु मूव फ्राम पाकिस्तान to england and how their recipes and how their shopping lists are changed it's an amazing project and they are all involved they're so excited and next year we are going to have uh, uh, not this year 2022 yes so we are going to have a food festival in manchester and all the pakistani community will be there and we will be having a recipe book published and we are preparing that recipe book and when these kids were here they went to rangoonwala hall in karachi and they cooked with the recipes of our <laughs> parents who were here so it was very very interesting one of the project was this and the other one like i said fake money kaise unko humne involve kiya plus the communities they are very very important i believe museums are no more reservoirs for the dead objects a concept tha ki aap museum jayenge cheeze padi hui hain dekh kar aa jayenge no now you are the ones who are actually it's a living ob it's a living institution so you give us your plan and we do it and we create our own plans and the communities they work for us i have a souvenir shop i had a big resistance in the beginning because being a central bank we couldn't have a souvenir shop uh, state bank business nahi kar sakta so 3 years i it took me 3 years fight to get a souvenir shop and to convince स्टेट बैंक दैट वाई सोविनियर शॉप इज़ इम्पॉर्टेंट तो उसमें मैं सारी कम्यूनिटीज़ के लोगों की चीज़ें रखती हूँ एंड वी सेल इट फॉर नॉन प्रॉफिट हुनर घर ये वो एंड नाओ आर इनकम इज़ लाइक मोर देन थर्टी फाइव लैख रुपीज़ ईयर एंड स्टेट बैंक डजेंट नो वट टू डू विद दैट मनी ऑल दो इज सबमिट इट बैक टू द गवर्नमेंट तो तो वो हम तो जमा करा देते थे रोज़ाना बट स्टेट बैंक इज अमेज टू सी द इनकम आई एम रेजिंग दिस इज वॉट वॉट टू डू विद दिस बजट तो दिस वे आई एम इंक्लूडिंग कम्यूनिटीज दैन स्पेशल चिल्ड्रेन दे मेक थिंग्स मग्स एंड ऑल तो उनकी जो पेंटिंग्स होती हैं उसको फिर हम मग्स पर लगा देते हैं कोस्टर्स बनाते हैं सो वी गिव रिसोर्स टू दैम ऑल्सो फोटोग्राफ करते हैं वो वन थाउजेंड की हम बेचते हैं वो उस बच्चे को चली जाती है तो इट्स न्यू फोटोग्राफी फॉर ब्लाइंड पीपल इज समथिंग न्यू इन पाकिस्तान which i learned during my uh, commonwealth association ki ek training with thi so i learned there i came back i trained my team into that phir currency of pakistan ki book maine first time uh, braille mein translate ki hai phir i did lot of uh, fa- uh, things in the currency notes of pakistan and i i had sessions with state bank uh, governor and team and we included all these Uh, special needs in our banks and currency notes and i told them to have an audit every year so this is all because of museum its museum is not any more a museum it's like something functional and it plays a role in everything of the city and the country and currency so museum sab kuch kar sakta hai everything is in museum it's a thing which holds everything and you need to just exploit the resources you have in the museum and how to bring in the younger people they are our source acha just one minute mujhe yaad hai when i was uh, doing this museum to mere sath team jo thi there were five fresh graduates from visual studies department so i had a lot of resistance from state bank ke uh, ye central bank ka museum hai they will spoil and people will say kya koi senior aap team rakhe so i told them to just to trust me so i train these five young graduates into graphic designing digitization and concept writing and displays and these were brilliant and whoever comes to the museum this museum is result of only the young people and how they were enthusiastic and how we trained them to so, um, young people pe mera bahut zyada belief hai aur main hamesha unko include karti hu aur ab state bank ne bhi ye yakeen karna shuru kar diya hai ki zaruri nahi hai ki aap consultant hai ya aap consultant lekar aaye but uh, you you trust your younger generation and they will prove it and they have always been proving to me so my museum concept is to open it up to the communities and young people so uh, they are so and uh, they are so proud of their work when they come back and they see their things so mera concept museum ka ye and i am happy ki i could play some role in our country's uh, 
younger generation. You've been playing a very big role, and uh, we, we in Pakistan at least, we are all, I'm sure, internationally, you have a, a huge reputation um, that stands in for you. Uh, Jean Baptiste, qu quick question. You know, tell us about some exciting projects that you are uh, spearheading at Louvre. Um, you know, something which is making the space more interactive for younger people or different communities that are represented. You know, how do you pick out? Themes uh, for souvenirs, for example, or something else that you, you know, uh, you may want to share with us, and then we open this up for. Um, uh, oh, um, yeah, but there is some echo. Oh, it's okay. Um, so when you're at the Louvre, you're not anymore like in other museums able to work on everything exactly as you do. So I have no project that can have the type of impact you have because there will be an, an entire team working on each specific ap aspect of the type of project you curate. So I, if I can say that I spare add something, uh, it's a future exhibition on Chinese art. We, we have a small collection of Chinese art and it, has n it hasn't been exhibited since the probably 1940s, it's not clear. And uh, that collection has been forbidden because, um, forgotten, sorry. Uh, <laughs> um, sort of the same thing. Um, because the, the National Museums of France traded their collection between themselves after, fo after World War II, and everything Asian got to the National Asian Art Museum, and everything European got to the Louvre. And there were some other divides, uh, all Egypt uh, that were elsewhere got to the Louvre. So we ordered the world this way. And the small collection I'm in charge with has been left there because the giver uh, gave it with provision, it stays inside the Louvre. And that's why we still have some Chinese art there. And this collection is very interesting because it's the, the collection of a man that is hated in France. Uh, President Thiers, he was, the, he was a politician, a very corrupt one. Uh, his career spans the entire 19th century from 1820 when he was a journalist advocating for the liberty of press. Then after a successful revolution initiated partly by him, he became interior museum minister and then started um, <laughs> repressing the press and making censorship laws. And then uh, years later he was defending the, the bourgeois order and ordered some um, shootings at protesters, uh, like poor protesters that were on strike for salaries. So the guy is hated. And we don't know why he's collecting China, but he's been all over the, the 19th century. And his collection, uh, bit by bit, comes from everything we know about the history of the Fra Franco-Chinese relationship from the 17th century till the 18th and then 19th century. And, and by exhibiting his collection, we will be speaking of 18th century China, but we will also be speaking about everything that happened between the Chinese and us. And some objects of this collection testify of the presence of the Jesuit priest from France at the imperial court in China in the 17th century. Some other objects testify of the diplomatic exchange between France and China. And some others testify of the atrocities committed by the French army during the Opium Wars in the middle of the 19th century. So the, his collection can be seen as layers and layers of history. And other objects in the collection um, demonstrate the passion of 18th century France for Chinese art. So we, we will have the historicity of the relationship between France and another civilization, another culture. And I, I, if there is something I mean meaningful in this project, is, it's that, it's complexity. Meaning right now in France and all over the world, you, you will hear people um, explaining you things in a very binary way. You're pro-something or anti-something and colonization, uh, which is an horrible process, will be defended by some people. We have some people like that in France, saying col colonization was good. But on the other end, the, the people that um, talk about colonization present it at the absolute evil. But we all know colonies that came during the colonization process with 
genuine goodwill, even if they were serving an horrible project, they themselves they didn't understand what it meant for the colonized people. So the, this complexity of having nice person doing horrible things, horrible person sometimes doing nice things, and all um, the fact that during the same history, in like that's what we have here. Uh, the French that were uh, in the Mughal Empire, uh, Tavernier or Tevno, they were fascinated by, by the Mughals and the relationship they have with this civilization is not the same we had as French when some of us came here in Lahore to serve the Sikhs as uh, employees, <laughs> generals and stuff. And so uh, what is very important for museum right now is to show that complexity and show that nothing is binary as we are told by politicians now. And uh, there are all kinds of relationship be between people, cooperation, concurrence, crimes, uh, everything. But it's not because we focus on something that we must forget everything else. And the tier collection is a good example of that. The tier, the tier collection was uh, forgotten because the guy is hated in France. Uh, and so when I said to my colleagues, oh, I will do an exhibition on that, they look at me like, what, tier? Uh, and yes. Uh, because the objects themselves, they tell you uh, a lot of stories. And that's very important to defend this in, in museums right now. Thank you so much. I wish we had time and we could actually hear the Napoleon's, Napoleon's gold, actually, that, you know, that's those stories as well. But, but I'm sure you can, you know, you can catch him and, and ask more questions. Uh, but yes, the floor is open for questions. Please, Saval Puche, museum ke baare mein, objects ke baare mein, uh, kyun zaruri hain, how can these objects uh, promote peace and tolerance in society? Have you ever been to a museum? Aap gaye museum, aapne kya mehsoos kiya, kya hona chahiye tha, kya nahi hai? Any of these, I'm sure our, you know, uh, very knowledgeable panelists will be able to answer at least some of your questions. Uh, Shakarili Museum, where I wo I'm working these days as the director, like we are totally at a standstill. We can't do anything. We do, we try and do programming with very meager amount of money, and but uh, you know we can't do quality programs. So how are we going to get around this uh, money problem that we have? I just asked you to uh, give not from state bank. They don't give the money, but my other resources say like I do a lot of projects and I am able to raise funds. And I have never no issue with the funds at all in my 32 years. So you just need to have a good project. Abhi mujhe third U.S. ambassador fund grant mila for conservation, and I ask them to increase the grant. They do that, and you know you just have to have a good project that's it i assure you you can have grants Mazala, you have to have her on the advisory <laughs> committee uh, team up she will her. be our boss <laughs> <laughs> she she yes, should be yes yeah. i never had issues <laughs> with the god How, how many times do they go to see uh, museums? Has anyone I, been I'd just like to ask what lessons in the country is what i would uh, there is some hi what lessons do you think the that you can kind of uh, inform for Pakistan's museums and say, for example, the Lahore Museum? What things can we take from your experience that we can take on and improve here? Uh, okay. Uh, yes, I can. I mean, like I'm into many committees for different museums. The good thing was that when the State Bank Museum inaugurated, a lot of small uh, offices or institutions came to know that they can have their own museums. Usse pehle, there was no concept that institutions can have their own museums. So from 2011 onwards, I worked for Oxford University Press Museum. I established Police Museum, Mukhi House Museum. I mean, several museums all over Sindh. 
and uh, we raise funds for them. So um, what I can give a, as a lesson to these young people to have a lively museum is that you should have a passion for that. Unless you have a passion, you cannot do it. I have young people coming to me. They just want to know how to become a director. They don't want to work. I mean, there is a 30 years gap between this directorship and, you know, so that is not the thing. Uh, well, I train a lot of young people with me and wo pacify ho jate, saath mein rekar thoda sa. but ye ke you need to show them that this field is a passionate field and you don't have much money into that, but it's just the, and for Lahore Museum, again, it's a government, I think it's a government, autonomous yes, body. Yes, So, uh, yeah, but you need to have a good uh, head of the institution. Wo sab kuch kar sakte hai. Agar uske andar will hogi, to they can do everything. If the director doesn't want to, um, unfortunately, uh, there are people who are there just for the job, not for the uh, subject or not for that profession which I faced in my National Museum thing. They used to come for 9 to 5 job or unko kuch nahi karna hota hai, chai pini hai, yeh tunkha to mil rahi hai, to kya zarurat hai kaam karne ki. To yeh ek, aapko yeh mindset change karna hoga ke kaam karne se aap hi ka fayda hai aur aap kahi aage chale jao ge kaam karo ge to. Magar loog government mein yeh ek baut, I mean, ek set pattern hai which you need to change. I don't know how to change, maybe through education. And we have stopped teaching philosophy, literature, and all those things unless, uh, yes, unless those subjects are there, you yeah. cannot uh, have be civilized people, you know. Mathematics or physics, but it's not going to be able to do it. So, we have a mission that we have to do it. I hope we will be able to produce a good generation for such type of works. They will have sympathy for heritage. I'm sure you also have, but. Many people don't have opportunity to do what they want to, but they can play their role. That is what I think, and I play my role as much as I can. The bottom line is passion. I, I have a few questions on this subject. Um, about uh, a trust, you make a, a, pla a place as a... It is. Like, um, I know the Fakir Khana, uh, a museum belongs to a particular family of Lahore, and it is a trust. Um, I also know that much of the work that was in that museum has been pilfered and sold. This has been happening also in uh, the Lahore Museum, and uh, etc. And we hear all kinds of horrendous stories of uh, uh, artworks which have been replaced by fakes in uh, state buildings where, you know, certain works of art are, are uh, displayed. Uh, where, what, do, what, what do you do leg leg legally to protect these um, treasures from being replaced by fakes or, or also uh, to have, uh, you know, outright theft? How do we, if Lahore Museum itself is facing that issue. So how do we, secondly, we also don't have people who will restore the works, old works, who, will, who are professional in their field and can actually make a difference in restoring a certain work of art. We do not have those kind of uh, professionals either. Very few, in fact, who can do that kind of work. So this, uh, if there's anyone who can... Uh, uh, so... Um, actually, when you when you come across such issue, there are two situations. Either you're in a um, stable administration and you you come across a random crazy guy. We had one in the National Library of France. He he, he stole pages from medieval manuscript, but he's known. Uh, there are two or three thousand curators in France. He's the only one, and he 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 was considered a madman when we discovered what he did. So this is when this is exceptional. What you describe has more to do with um, the, you, you asked me about legal uh, procedures, but actually legal procedures are just uh, the, the, the last part of the democratical right. process, meaning you have a population that has rights, that votes, and votes for representatives that uh, create laws that represent 
their their wish, and you can you can craft uh, protective laws against theft in museum. You probably already have, uh, most likely, as in any any structured country, uh, you have a chapter somewhere in your law about this, saying this is uh, property of the state, so you just cannot pillage it. Uh, whatever the way you write it, uh, any every country has that. The problem is that to implement that, you must have a clear common conscious of the entire population from the museum director to the, 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 the most, uh, the, the lowest guy in the museum must have this knowledge, okay, this is heritage you don't touch, you don't steal, you don't destroy. And the, so it, this comes to the same issue we were discussing earlier, how you build the community, and this time this is your entire national community, to be conscious that heritage is important and that heritage being important, some procedure, proced procedures must be respected and then you can implement some laws and penalties and stuff. But again, if you, if you're like your policemen don't care, what can you do? We have this issue in France. Um, there, there is some part of very ugly art that was ordered by the French state during the 19th century to, for decoration of um, city halls. And it's really ugly. It's, it's um, the, 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 the worst. It's bad. But it has been ordered by the state, paid by the state, and in French laws, it cannot be sold, it cannot be destroyed. Uh, we say uh, imprescriptible. There are three or four adjectives, but that say that these things are forever the property of the state. And regularly, we, saw, we see them uh, in sales on the internet or somewhere because they are so ugly that when someone destroys uh, an old building like an old town hall uh, because it's a new one is built, no one cares for the very, very ugly thing that is in the corner and this is worse than the decoration we buy in Ikea. So, so, so very often things are simply destroyed because people don't care because in their mind it's crap. So uh, this is purely about representation, meaning you have to have your entire population aware of the issue and having a basic knowledge, not an art historian knowledge, but uh, a, a citizen knowledge of this is our history, this is our culture, and so that should not be destroyed or pillaged. And that is, uh, so it's a groundwork you start in schools. So that's why it's important that you have the kids in the, the school kids and that you manage to welcome them as you do because that's where it starts and it's a generation's work. You, you can't do that overnight. But you can even put death penalty over art trafficking. This has been done in several places in the world and it doesn't fix the issue because the, the, the networks that, that work on that... Uh, oh, and wait, oh, sorry. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for all of you for your patience and interest in this panel. Let's give our panelists a round of applause for their presentation. Thank you very much. <laughs>